Morning Smarter News. Sometimes the news gives us such a juxtaposition that it really provides perspective in so many different ways. And we have that today in two different stories. One that's happening above us and one that's happening right here around us. It actually sort of took my breath away watching the news this morning. Or, or it could just be that the altitude where I am right now, which is Montana. <laughs> I walk up a flight of stairs and I'm like... <gasps> But it, it's, it's okay. We're, we're okay. I hope you guys are having a great morning. I'm going to take a little sip of my... I'm not having coffee now. I'm having iced tea. Take it down a notch just to make sure I don't, I don't talk too quickly. What I was watching this morning is this. Let me go ahead and pull this up for you. You might have heard something about this this morning. This is the launch of the Blue Origin spacecraft that took four people, including Jeff Bezos, Amazon founder and richest man in the world, to space. It's incredible to watch. It's about an 11-minute trip. This is the 16th flight by Blue Origin, but the first one that's carrying actual people on board. So it's significant and risky in some ways, right? So you can see it launch into space. It was, it was fascinating, fascinating to watch. We talked a little bit about this last week. Virgin Galactic did a, a space launch last week with Richard Branson. Let me go ahead and pull, let's watch it one more time. Richard Branson went into space. Really why that was significant is it's the dawn of space tourism. We've talked a lot about that. Virgin Galactic is really focusing on space tourism. SpaceX, which you've probably heard a lot about, has had, had these major partnerships with NASA. They talked a little bit about space tourism too, but they're kind of at a different level. Blue Origin's interesting because it's, it's somewhat of a hybrid. I'm going to show you the landing too. And in some ways, Jeff Bezos has been very mysterious about exactly what he's going to be doing with Blue Origin over the next several years. Let me pull up the landing for you. This was also really cool to watch because you're going to see the parachutes come out in just a moment. Oh, so far, a nominal there flight. they are. Here the so in some ways, Blue Origin is a little space. bit of a hybrid. Yes, space tourism is part of this, but also a question about house. how this technology Reaping is going to be used in different ways, business, partnerships, inflation. and otherwise. So what you should know is it was a Our successful flight. They come back down to Earth. And it's interesting, Richard Branson again last week sort of beat Jeff Bezos as the first billionaire to get up into space in his own project. But Jeff Bezos actually went a little bit higher. There's something called the Carmen line. That's what's distinguished as or determined by the international community as when space begins. It's about 60 miles above where you are right now. Uh, Richard Branson went about 50 miles. Jeff Bezos went a little bit higher. So one went first, one went higher. Men. <laughs> They had a little competition, but this was a big day today, historic for Blue Origin to go up into space and really remarkable to watch. So we'll try to bring some of that video for you to continue to watch. I'm getting a little bit of a poor connection. Isn't it fascinating, by the way, that we can get people into space in 11 minutes and I could have really bad internet connection, bad internet connection in Montana, but also where I live in Austin and also where I lived in San Francisco and in New York City. You know, I wrote an editorial about internet connection and Wi-Fi access as one of the big issues going into the 2020 election. I couldn't get anybody to publish it. I really think it's a big deal. We're getting impacted by it now, but I think it's significant, not just for businesses, but remember all of our students were online last year, right? Do you guys have problems with your internet? I do. And everyone's like, ah, sorry, you know? All right. The second story I want to tell you about. So what, what we're talking about is again, the contrast, the contrast of sending people into space, but then also what's happening here here on earth. And one of the big stories I talked to you about a little bit yesterday is what's happening at the US border. And I think this is really significant because we're seeing historic record numbers at the US border of attempted entries. What I was able to receive from the Big Bend sector, remember Customs Border Protection has a lot of different sectors and they're all along the border. Let me pull up a map to show you. This border, this map's sort of helpful because the red lines are where the border wall is and where there's not a border wall, you can see it's just sort of like the, the gray line. The, you know, the important thing to know about the border wall is a border wall can't go everywhere because of the terrain. One of the areas it's uh, that I'm sort of interested in is this Big Bend sector because it's not an area that I associate with the border just naturally. It's where Marfa is. It's a big tourist area, Big Bend National Forest, beautiful area in Texas. But they certainly have uh, active uh, border patrol issues. And this is what I received just during a press release last week. So this was accessible to a lot of media. Let me pull it up for how I put it on Instagram so you can see it. What happened is there were two big trailers that Border Patrol was able to pull over. And inside the trailers, this is what it looked like. You can see the x-ray of different people. Do you see the man sitting on the step? 
Let me show you what it looked like inside the trailer. There, again, there were two of them. And you can see this is what it actually looks like inside the trailer. What I thought was really important by because of this press release is that how direct the Customs and Border Protection chief was uh, the sector was saying this is about transnational organizations, criminal organizations that are putting people in really dangerous situations like this one, packing them into a trailer, taking them across the border in horrible conditions. Uh, who, where are these people from? A lot of different places: Mexico, Honduras, Ecuador, Peru. That's what was in the press release. But I want to show you something else that I also think is important so that you understand it's not just about the numbers. I was talking about the numbers yesterday. The other thing, a trend I'm seeing over the last several months is the reemergence of these really large groups. So large groups are usually categorized as anything over 100 people that are coming across the border at one time or attempting to. In this press release, you can see one group had more than 230 um, people that were together. And I can see here 187 family members, 27 unaccompanied children, 21 single migrants. The Migrants is the term that Customs and Border Protection uses. The U.S. government, I prefer people. I think migrants is the, a, a term that um, in some ways doesn't put someone on equal footing. These are people that are that are being put in these very dangerous situations. What I've learned from my reporting and why I think this is really important for you is when there are large groups that have come across the border, who's organizing those groups? Human smugglers. Human smugglers often attached to drug cartels. What I've learned talking to Border Patrol is when you have these large groups go one direction around the border, Border Patrol has to handle that. When they're paying attention to those large groups, what do you think is happening in another area? The drug cartels know that they're paying attention to the large groups and they're going another direction. This is based strictly on conversations with Border Patrol. So when we're talking about the border, it's not just about what's happening at the border and a debate about immigration. It's also about bad guys and what they're doing, what they're doing to people, innocent people, and what they're doing to bring drugs into the country. And we can have all sorts of long debates about this. I just want you to be very aware of what's going on. I was really interested to look at the White House press briefing yesterday to see if there was any commentary, more commentary on what's happening at the border. I was really surprised not even to see one question about this. I think this is one of the biggest stories in the nation because there's so many different threads to pull from the economy, national security, and simple basic human rights, you know, humanity. So this is a story that we're going to continue to watch on Smarter News. So two very different stories today talking about very different technology i always say and i think this is important to think about i can sit right now and i can use amazon and send a roll of toilet paper to my house by the end of the day okay not choosing to solve some of these other problems in the country is a choice it's not from a lack of technology it's from a lack of will and so that's how i look at things if we can do that and we can send people into space in 11 minutes? Imagine what we can do. We can do a lot of really interesting things. We can solve a lot of problems, can't we? So when we don't do it, I think, well, why are we choosing not to? And what are the dynamics? How do we report on that? So these are the stories that I'm interested in today. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. We're going to be doing a little bit of traveling. And quite frankly, we're leaving the location we're in because even though we're traveling with our kids, we can we are working and we're not able to do that because of the bad connection. So we're actually going to be moving. So my next couple of days might be a little bit... Um, sporadic, intermittent, sort of like my internet connection today. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great day. Thanks so much for your support of Smarter News. All these stories are written up, links to the photos and everything else on smarternews.com. Don't forget that we're there. Visit our website, save it to your home screen, and then you have easy access wherever you are, whenever you want. Have a great day.